This is the new Jeep Wrangler and it's a little bit like Bear Grylls in the fact that it can survive in pretty much any form of conditions, especially if you've got one of these tent boxes on it. So this is the kind of car you're probably going to be looking at if you're considering something like a Toyota Land Cruiser or maybe a Land Rover Defender, Suzuki Jimny or even a Mercedes G-Class. So this Jeep Wrangler actually starts from £45,000. So you can save an average of four and a half grand off one through CarWow. And if you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen or follow the link below the video, you can go to CarWow to see how much you can save on this or any car. Speaking of which, you can fit these tent boxes to any car as long as it's got roof rails. The link for this is also below the video as well. Let's start this review by talking about the Jeep's design because this thing is instantly recognisable from the big spare wheel on the back, which clearly says Jeep, to the boxy design, the square tail lights. <laughs> it's super cool, actually. You can get it with this hard removable roof or you can get a fabric roof which you can fold back. Then look at this, you've got little details such as the Willys Jeep there and there's many of them dotted about the place on this car as well. Obviously you've got slab sides, you've got exposed door hinges and the Wrangler can look a bit different depending on which model you have. So this is the hardcore off-road Rubicon version but there are some more lifestyle versions and they have running boards rather than these kind of boulder rails here because you need something tough if you're going serious off-roading and it is a serious off-road look. Jeep has even rated it themselves. They've trail rated it as a 4x4. That's a little bit like self-certifying when you're off sick at work, isn't it? Can I really trust them to grade their car properly? Anyway, it is a great off-roader. Now, this Rubicon has black wheel arches and stuff. The other versions, they're body coloured. At the front, it has a slightly different grille as well, but all Jeeps have these slatted grilles. It's a mean, purposeful looking vehicle. And if you think this four-door is just a little bit too normal, you can also get a two-door version. I like it. Here on the inside, the Jeep Wrangler is just as distinctive as is on the outside. You've got a very utilitarian look with a flat-sided dash with big air vents. But while some of the materials are a bit cheap lower down, it doesn't actually feel that utilitarian inside because you've got squidgy materials here, soft leather on the dash, it's soft on the door tops, you've got a really nice feeling steering wheel, padded armrest here on the centre console, another padded armrest over here. It's all pretty nicely made and the switches feel well damped and pretty solid and you've got huge controls as well which you can operate with gloves on which is really nice what's not so good though is their layout so some of them are a little bit confusing such as the window switches here why they appear on the door and i haven't seen a car with a actual cigarette lighter for ages maybe that says a little bit about the people who buy these cars anyway that brings me on to this car's equipment list the sahara model gets keyless entry a reversing camera which is neatly housed inside the spare wheel housing and an 8-inch touchscreen with satellite navigation and little digital display for the driver. Next up is the Overland model which gets a leather interior. Yeah, I like a bit of car hide. There's also heated front seats and blind spot monitoring plus rear cross traffic alert. Finally, there's this hardcore Rubicon version which has uprated axles it has front and rear locking differentials. It has disconnectable sway bars and four auxiliary power supplies for things like winch and external lights. Plus, it gets rugged off-road BF Goodrich tires. Let's continue this review by talking about the Wrangler's infotainment system. So the screen is bright and high resolution and it responds quickly to your touches, but its on-screen icons are small and they can be hard to hit accurately while you're concentrating on driving. Also, the sat-nav maps do look nice, but inputting a destination and a waypoint is really a bit of a faff. Thankfully, though, you can just plug in your phone and use Waze or Google Maps via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. You can also use these to connect to Spotify, and every Wrangler comes with a premium 552-watt Alpine stereo system with eight speakers plus a bassy subwoofer, which sounds very good indeed. Now onto the little digital driver's display. So it's bright, nicely laid out and easy to understand. And you can cycle through things like trip info, car settings and off-road stats using the steering wheel buttons. However, you've still got a normal rev counter and speedometer. And overall, the digital driver's display is nowhere near as good or as configurable as that as you can get in a Mercedes G-Class. In fact, if you click on the pop-out banner up there or on the link below the video, you can watch my full in-depth video review of the incredible AMG G63. Now, let's talk about some of the layout of the cabin and general living with it. So. It's quite a step up to get in and out. Thankfully, you've got these grab handles there. There's also a grab handle for the passenger. 
However, one problem with this car is that while there is quite a bit of headroom, if you've got really long legs, you might not be able to get the front seat far enough back. Also, there's no place for you to rest your left foot like there is in most cars as well. Another thing that's a bit annoying is this, look. There's not all that much adjustment in the steering wheel. One thing I do like though, is that the backrest for the front seats is just on a ratchet, look. So you can just get it exactly where you want it, nice and quickly, rather than having to turn an annoying dial. Another thing that's annoying are the door pockets, because they're not normal bins, they're actually nets. So you think you're gonna be able to fit some stuff in them, and you can't quite. And if you fit stuff in with the door open, like this big bottle, and then shut it, I mean, try and move your seat, it kind of all gets wedged. Other storage spaces are better. So you've got a little area here, which is actually a little bit too little for the largest mobile phones. That's annoying. But there's plenty of space under here. Look, there we go. And there's a charging port there. Speaking of which, you've got some more charging ports here and here. And there's auxiliary in if you're old fashioned. The cup holders are nice and big. They're clearly American size. So actually look at this, right? If I can, oh, I'm gonna do this. Not only will they hold a coffee cup, you can fit a huge bottle in there. It's not so good for the smaller energy drinks though, but there is a place at least for your car's key. So I like that. As for the glove box, well, it's not the biggest, but I think you should be able to fit a Glock in there, which is ideal. Getting into the back of the Wrangler isn't exactly the easiest process because if you have the two door, you have to fold down the front seats and squeeze in behind them. With the four doors, the opening isn't all that big and you have to be careful not to catch yourself on this as you're clambering in or even worse, the exposed door bracket because ah, you can hit your bow on it then you jump up and hit your head on there like I just did and it all becomes a little bit of a palaver. But once you're in, oh yeah, lots of space, decent headroom, decent knee room, decent foot space, you can stretch out. Also because the floor is relatively flat, there's plenty of room for three people's feet. And in fact, this car is actually pretty good for carrying three adults in the back at once. There's some other things I like as well. So here in the back, the door nets really do work because they don't wedge up against the seat. So you can carry big bottles in them or actually in the seat backs there. There's some extra little strap things going on here. Don't know what they're for. I think they're just a design feature. There's some kind of storage trays here. One down here where you can store your mobile phone. And look at this. There is a 230 volt power supply that you're going to need an adapter to fit a British plug in there. It will work with European and US plugs. You've also got four USB inputs, two normal ones and two USB-C. But I don't like this. I don't like the fact that the window controls are here. Stupid. Though the windows do go all the way down and they're nice and low so you can see out. I also like this as well, look. Fold this down and you've got an armrest. There's two huge cup holders there which will not only hold a big bottle like that but also those huge bladder buster takeaway cups you get from the drive through There's a place there for your mobile phone, so if you like to look at your movies in portrait, you can do it that way, or if you put it in like that, you can just lengthen this out and watch them in landscape as they should be watched. Move that out of the way, because I want to show you this. Look, you've got exposed Isofix anchor points. Now that makes it quite easy to fit a baby seat. However, it's not the easiest to get it in through the doors because they are narrow. And if you want to fit one of those bulky rear facing seats, you're going to need to push the front passenger seat forward to get it in. However, it is easy to fit a normal child seat. And even with two child seats in place, there is enough room for an adult to sit in between them, which is actually quite good. I have some initial problems with the Wrangler's boot. The first is that the door style tailgate is hard to open in tight spaces and it's heavy because you've got this big spare wheel on the back. It would also be nice if you could actually lift up this glass screen with the lower part shut to just chuck stuff in when it's raining like it is now. And there's the other problem that if you leave it up then you're like, oh, bugger it, I forgot. I've got to do it this way round to shut it. Anyway, moving on to more positive things. So the actual boot space is nice and square and there's no load lip so you can slide things in and out fairly easily. You do have some tethering points about the place which is down here. Down here, you've got your 12 volt socket there as well for your auxiliary items. And there's a bit of underfloor storage as well. Yay, look at that. It's very much actually, not too bad at all. If you need to fold down the rear seats for more space, look, press that button to fold down the headrest. Hey, and then you just do the other one. Nice and simple. There we go. And you get a pretty much flat floor, which makes it super easy to slide things back in that you've just got out. Look work them all the way to the front. 
Now in terms of the load capacity, you can just throw a bike in there or two without having to take their wheels off. You'll also be able to fit two large boxes, 13 further small boxes, two small suitcases, two large suitcases and a push chair all at once. Now the Wrangler doesn't actually have a low cover which is a bit annoying but with the rear seats in place you can safely stack two large and two small suitcases plus a soft bag or two large boxes, two small boxes plus a set of golf clubs up to the window line. However, the actual load space that you get with the Toyota Land Cruiser is slightly better. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video on that car, just click up there on the pop-out banner, follow the link below the video. And that brings me on to five annoying things about the Jeep Wrangler. This isn't exactly the cheapest car, yet you don't get electrically folding door mirrors. And they are really hard to bloody hell push in. Do you want to know the Jeep Wrangler's incredible Euro NCAP safety rating? Well, it is one star. Oh sh The rear seat belts always end up just kind of flopping behind the rear seat, in a little bit trapped, so it's always a bit of a pain for your rear passengers to grab them. It's very easy to catch your finger on the release switch for the gear selector and it just pinches it. It's not only the driver who's at risk of hurting themselves on this car, so too can the passenger, especially when they're trying getting out because this grab handle, it's all too easy to just bang, a plumbing knee on it like that. I don't know what it is with this car, it's just so easy to hurt yourself on it. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. It's got a rear drive mode if you want maximum hoonage. <laughs> Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! This Wrangler has some impressive off-road capability with very good approach, departure and breakover angles. Plus, you can drive it through water of up to 76 centimetres deep. It is a proper hardcore off-roader. You can remove the roof panels very easily like that if you want to open the sunroof. But more than that, you can even remove pretty much all the body panels and the doors and the rest of the roof as well if you want to go for full alfresco Jeep Wrangling. If a low range gearbox isn't off-road enough for you, then you can actually fit this car with stacks of different off-road accessories, such as snorkels, winches, and all manner of stuff. The car speakers are waterproof, so it doesn't really matter to get a little bit wet if you get caught short with the roof off in a downpour. Okay then, let's talk about engines. So it's a bit different to get under the bonnet of this car than other more normal vehicles. So you have to undo these catches first and rather than pulling a release inside the car you then use the key to unlatch it here. There we go, pull it up, find the release, it's in there somewhere. And there you have the engine. Now there's two choices, <laughs> so everything in this is a little bit harder than in other cars. So there's two choices, you can have a two litre four cylinder turbo petrol with 272 horsepower which can do 0 to 60 in seven seconds. Then there's a 2.2 litre diesel with 200 horsepower which can do 0 to 60 in nine seconds and it returns 28 mpg which really isn't much more economy than you'll get from the petrol. All cars come with four wheel drive and an automatic gearbox. So this particular one is the two litre petrol, it's the Rubicon as you can see but I put the details into CarWow and I've got an offer back for that much which is a bit better, isn't it? Now, if you want to try out the car wag configurator, I suggest you do, click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the link below the video. Now comes time to drive the new Wrangler. And I must say, it's way better than before, but that's because the old one was absolutely to drive. In town, you notice the fact that it's got that ladder frame chassis, so you've got like a strong ladder frame and then the body's on top. And as a result, you feel lots of bumps coming through the cabin, so over speed humps, potholes, that send a bit of a shudder through your bones. One thing I can't complain about though is the steering because it's nice and light. The turning circle isn't terrible. It's about the same as a Land Rover Discovery Sport and better than a Mercedes G-Class. So it's all right. Problem is, it's not great at self-centering. It takes a while. Come on, come on, come on, come on. There we go. Visibility is quite good though. You know, you sit up high, you've got that big bluff bonnet and wing mirrors are good as well. So it's not quite as bad as you think to park, especially because you've got all around parking sensors and that, that rear view camera as standard, which is good. So you can live with one of these round town. Now, when you get out on the motorway, build at speed, 
One thing you notice is that you get quite a lot of wind noise from the roof area. It just seems to echo around. There's no obviously lining up here through these panels. So can you hear that? That's 60 miles an hour. It's a right old noise that is. The car also meanders quite a bit. <laughs> just meandering about the place. It's not great. You do get quite a lot of tire noise as well from these rugged off-road tires. It's not so bad on the normal car. Performance-wise, this engine, this petrol, is actually pretty blooming decent, you know. So I'm doing 50 miles an hour now. Need to overtake someone, floor it, picks up and it goes. And the gearbox is pretty responsive as well. That's impressive. Now, economy-wise, that's less impressive, but what do you expect? And I'm returning just under 24 miles per gallon. Now, this thing does not handle well at all. Listen to that. If you steer it hard, the car starts braking. The stability control goes, no, we're all going to die. And it just intervenes and just starts breaking the wheels to pull it straight. And there is not much grip and it does lean a lot. But this car isn't for that. It's for going off road and it's blooming brilliant off road. It's just that I've got nowhere around here to really put it through its paces. So I'm actually going to do another video where I do take it off road. <laughs> So then, what's my final verdict on the Jeep Wrangler? Well, personally, I actually love this car. It's got bags of personality and it's great at what it's supposed to do. So if you want a credible, proper off-roader or something that just looks super cool that you can actually just about live with every day, I say, go and buy this thing. However, for most people, most of the time, looking for a lifestyle SUV, avoid it. It's not so good for the smaller energy gym. Most of the... Uh, right here. Do you want to know the Jeep Wrangler's Euro NCAP safety rating? Oh, and again, you fell over. Do you want to know the Jeep Wrangler's Euro NCAP safety rating? It is an incredible one star.